Growing tensions between the U.S. and Israel after seven aid workers were killed in an Israeli strike. President Biden said to be outraged is set to speak by phone today with Prime Minister Netanyahu. This will be the first conversation between the two leaders since that deadly airstrike. And we now have the first on-camera comments from the founder of World Central Kitchen, Chef Jose Andres, calling for an independent investigation. They were target systematically, car by car, because uh, they were not successful in hitting, they keep trying. We need to have uh, an investigation uh, that is neutral. The humanitarians and civilians should never be paying the consequences of war. Joining us now, NBC News International correspondent Megan Fitzgerald, NBC's Ali Rafa standing by at the White House, and Evelyn Farkas, former senior advisor to the Supreme Allied Commander of Europe and executive director of the McCain Institute. Ali, what do we know about the president's mindset and White House expectations of this phone call? Yeah, Anna, good morning. Well, it's significant any time the president and Prime Minister Netanyahu speak over the phone, but this time is incredibly consequential considering that this is going to be, as you mentioned, the first time these two leaders have spoken since that strike that killed seven aid workers. And uh, one U.S. official tells us that this call was scheduled after that strike took place. The official also adding that the president is, quote, still very angry about that strike. And the official is saying that that his anger is going to be conveyed to Prime Minister Netanyahu on this call. And it's indicative of a broader problem, they say, of how Israel is conducting its military operations, saying that either Israel is not passing on its deconfliction details that it had from the World Central Kitchen onto its military, or that those details were received and then subsequently ignored. And Anna, if you remember that this call is coming after months and months of pressure and urging from U.S. officials onto their Israeli counterparts to do more to protect innocent civilian life in Gaza, but also to do more to allow the entry of humanitarian aid, uh, that desperately needed aid, into Gaza. So uh, a U.S. official also telling us that uh, the president plans on expressing that frustration, uh, that the, that urgency, that uh, pressure is not being received by uh, the Israelis on this phone call that uh, we also expect Vice President and Harris to join as well. And again, a phone call that hasn't happened or contact that hasn't happened since March 18th. Megan, the outrage is growing. The pressure is growing on Israel to change tactics. How is Israel, both the government and the people, responding? Well, look, Anna, you know, we've been seeing this new fierce wave of protests in Israel since this weekend. Tens of thousands of people filling the streets from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem and even outside Prime Minister Netanyahu's house. Uh, these residents are angry and they're calling on Netanyahu to sign a deal to get these hostages home. But also, many are calling for him to resign. Uh, I spoke with Gil Dickman this weekend from Israel. His cousin is being held hostage in Gaza. He told me people are fed up, they're frustrated, and they want the hostages to be the priority, and they don't feel that they are. It's a sentiment that's echoed across the country. But look, we've also seen protesters taking their message to the Knesset, spearing paint on the windows of the public gallery. And just yesterday, Benny Gantz, a war cabinet member, uh, and Netanyahu's top rival, calling for early elections in September. They're meant to be in the fall of 2026. So very clear here that Netanyahu continues to face this mounting pressure at home and abroad uh, with this international condemnation for the way in which uh, he is handling the war in Gaza, Anna. And Ali, President Biden had those sharp words right after this tragedy involving the world's central kitchen workers. He said this was not a standalone incident. He has said Israel doesn't do enough to protect civilians. But will there be any real change with the U.S. policy towards Israel as a result of all this? Yeah, Anna, and that's the latest in really a months long uh, time duration of this sharp uh, criticism that the president has had uh, for Prime Minister Netanyahu for Israel's actions in Gaza. And so far, the U.S. is not indicating that there is being there is going to be any shift in policy toward Israel. So far, we've only seen the president, the vice president, warn of quote consequences if Israel invaded Rafah. They didn't elaborate on what those consequences could be. Uh, 
Uh, but as far as aid deliveries and protecting uh, civilian life in Gaza, there hasn't been a, an explicit warning of consequences uh, by the U.S. towards Israel. White House officials, when they have been asked about this, continue to stress that Israel continues to have a right to defend itself, that there is no daylight between the U.S. and its longstanding ally. Uh, and the U.S. is continuing to send that military aid to Israel as recently as this past weekend, even though that was part of longstanding U.S. aid to Israel, uh, there was a significant amount of criticism uh, when that was reported that that additional aid did go to Israel, Anna. All right, Ali Rafa and Megan Fitzgerald, thank you both for the reporting. Evelyn, as we hear, President Biden is angry and he is going to express his anger with Netanyahu. What are you making of this growing rift, it appears, between these two world leaders? Yeah, Anna, I think what we're seeing is kind of the the public um, explosion, if you will. Maybe that's the wrong word, but um, we're seeing now a public manifestation of a disagreement. I think that's been there really since almost the beginning of Israel's um, launch of the um, retribution of the of the attack into Gaza to try to take out the Hamas terrorists. The administration thought that they could persuade Netanyahu behind the scenes to prioritize a ceasefire, release of the hostages, and, of course, taking care of the, the civilians in Gaza. Uh, they haven't done that so uh, successfully. I mean, some hostages were released, we know that. Um, but in the last several months, there's been no um, no demonstration of Israel really paying attention to what our administration's been saying, which is don't launch a new offensive into the southern part of Israel of Gaza and take care of the civilians, make sure humanitarian assistance gets through, and of course work negotiate towards a ceasefire. All of that has been ignored. So I think the pressure has come out into the public for now. And the fact that the White House is telling us about this phone call, that the phone call comes after these killings, demonstrates just increasing frustration on the part of the president. And the phone call comes after the virtual meeting that took place on Monday between top U.S. and Israeli officials. And we're learning more that they were discussing Israel's plan for a ground invasion of Rafah there in the south, where all those civilians have gone. And officials familiar with this this meeting tell NBC it grew contentious with Israel's Minister of Strategic Affairs yelling and waving his arms as he defended their plan. But according to officials, quote, the Israeli proposal did not include plans for addressing sanitation needs or an assessment of how much food or water would be required or where it would even come from. This official said, and they said that the Israeli officials had only thought through sourcing for a fraction of the hundreds of thousands of tents that would be needed. What's your reaction to that? My reaction, Anna, is it's kind of more of the same, because when Israel launched this operation into Gaza to take out the Hamas fighters, there was a lot of concern right from the beginning. You know, what is the strategic objective? What are the military objectives, and how do they tie to the strategic objective? How is this going to come to an end? How are they going to ensure that civilians are not harmed <laughs> um, the way that they have been? I mean, 30,000 um, dead. This is not the way to conduct a military operation. If you're going after terrorists, you should be more precise because they're creating more terrorists, obviously, um, because the population is, um, you know, understandably upset. So um, I think that's great reporting. It shows, again, the lack of detail, the lack of, if they have the detail, they're not sharing it with us. So why would we, why would we support such an operation that will bring only more harm to innocent civilians? Evelyn Farkas, thank you so much for taking the time and offering your perspective and insights on all of this. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on Get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.